So the way that you present yourself, the way that you look and act when you're in social engagement, that behavior is what is sending cues to other people that they can also be safe, that you're a safe person and that they can co-regulate with you to come up their ladders as well. So the very ways we behave in social engagement are the very ways that we communicate safety to other people. What's really unique about sex, what makes this advanced learning, is that during sex, we have to be in more than one autonomic state at a time, in more than one place on the ladder. Um, you have lost connection with the partner. You've lost connection with your own sensation, your own pleasure, your own experience in this. And the goal here for both of these, whether it's mobilization without safety or freeze without safety, the goal is to maintain connection. So we've lost connection when we aren't up here also. And so the goal is to be able to be in these states and still be in social engagement, still be connected with another person's nervous system. And so that's what I'm going to teach you in this course, is exactly how to do that, how to maintain connection, even when you are down your ladder. These tools that I'm presenting do fall into different kinds of categories, although they often overlap. Uh, I've sort of divided it up into things that you can do before, just before, during sex, after sex, outside of sex by yourself, outside of sex with your partner, and outside of sex with other people. Now in the bonus footage from last week from Polyvagal Partnership, it was a lot about how to, <clears throat> it was all about how to strengthen those neural pathways of relationship. So all of those things in that video apply to this work as well. With your partner, absolutely, and with other people. So what I want you to do is flood yourself with positive experiences of relationship. I want you to limit exposure to unsafe relationship and flood yourself with fun, playful, calm, feeling good experiences with friends and family. That will really, really help you feel safer during sex. It just does. And the final category is what tools can be used without telling your partner. So you may be in a committed relationship, you may be in relationship transition, or you may not be a relationship kind of person. Um, so you might be in a situation where you can confide in your partner and say, I'm taking this course and here's what she is saying and some of it's weird, but let's try this thing, what do you think? But that might not be appropriate for your situation. So one of these categories is a list of the tools that you can use um, just on your own without divulging to anyone what it is that you're doing. So sexual satisfaction and pleasure are an essential part of a woman's well-being. Orgasm can be and often is a central experience or aspect of sexual pleasure. But it doesn't have to be. Pleasure normally comes from intimacy, and intimacy comes from connection. And women report over and over again, all over the world, of every age, that great sex is much more about the connection with a partner than it is about genital stimulation. The quality of the orgasm is more about the connection than the physical experience. Another is that we have this need uh, for evolutionary necessity. So we have this, we've had this big push to explain why women have orgasm based on evolution. And that has also led us down some weird paths that are untrue. Orgasm is completely subjective. You get to define it. It is different for every woman and it can be different every time for one woman. So every time you have an orgasm, it can be in a different place or feel like it's in a different place. It can be a completely different experience. 
And as I sort of mentioned at the beginning, orgasm is not always pleasurable. What we are seeking is pleasure and sexual satisfaction. And orgasm is not always part of that, which means you can have, of course, a very sexually gratifying, satisfying, pleasurable experience without orgasm. And you can have orgasm under duress. So it is absolutely possible to be having an orgasm even though you are not aroused from the top down. So under circumstances without consent, rape, when you're, you hate the person, when you're feeling bad, you can still have an orgasm. So orgasm and pleasure are not always interchangeable. What trauma does is that it marginalizes people. It isolates people. It takes us away from our ability to co-regulate. We are meant to risk, to be people, especially little people when we're children. We are meant to go out and risk and test out our ability to be in the world, test out the environment, right? The larger and larger environment, the older we get. And then we are meant to every time retreat and return to safety. And what trauma does is remove that. And traumatized people have nothing to retreat to. It is just more danger. Where You can see me, you can really be comfortable understanding and knowing me and connecting with me when you can see my face. So that's why I'm teaching with video. If this were just audio and I was teaching you without my face, it would be more difficult for you to determine and if I'm safe and to feel safe listening to this. So it's the same thing in the bedroom. It's the same thing all the time. Um, so if you are starting out strong, you're feeling safe and connected and then you lose the connection you can go backwards. So if you have now become really like deeply into it and your eyes are all closed or you're down further away from the face on your partner's body and you start to slip and you feel the connection being removed from your experience, you start to dip, right? Then you can go backwards. So right now you're just using touch to communicate safety. So maybe you need voice too. So then you can make voice contact and you could talk about how you're feeling. You could talk about what you want. You can ask your partner what he or she wants, right? You can bring in, any, you can make sounds, any kind of voice that you can bring back online just to bring in more cues of safety. And if you don't wanna do that, or if that's not enough either, then you bring back in the face. You go back and connect with the face. The eye contact and the smiling, and then, oh, there it is. There's the connection. 